Hi, Jeff. Hi, Tim. Can you hear me at all? Uh, loud and clear, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds possible. Yeah. This is a good start. Let's just double check the audio side. I, I can't see how you change audio settings on here, though. Is that better? That might be slightly better. Background. Yeah, it's better, yes, yeah. It's a bit tarter. Fine. Actually, I might just... Can you still hear me, Tim? Yeah, you're fine, yeah. Is that better quality or not, as it is now? Uh, both both have sounded very clear. That's all good. All good, she's positive. Let's hope Carol can join us. So, so far, it seems to, it's bizarre. It just seems to work so far, doesn't it? <laughs> I hope that continues. Do, do, do we still need the Zoom room, or shall I? Um, I, um, I mean, it's waiting. still there in case Carol has a problem, I guess. Fine, um, yeah, good thinking. But uh, it looks to me as though I've got controls here. What can I see? I've got a QA. and a Cool. Yeah, see you back in. All good. <laughs> so, so it's interesting that uh, if you go anywhere else on the same URL, you do lose your presence in the room. Uh, so, basically, don't don't touch anything on the website. Is that is that it? If in doubt, yeah, don't touch the yeah. website. Yeah, I think we've got uh, Amira's just joined the room as well. Just so you're aware. Now, Tim, I've got a blue clock in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen. Mm -hmm. the same for you. Is that the yeah. countdown to start, I presume? Yeah, just over 26 minutes. Any any word from Carol today? Does she? Not yet. I'm just checking online. now. Yeah. 
nothing just yet. So. I presume if yours worked, I think we should be fine because that seemed to work pretty much okay. Um, I had to refresh my page to get in though on the outside. Okay, that's that's good to know actually. Just popped a little comment in the Q&A. Um, does that come up for you? Yeah, that's fine. I can see that, yeah. Great, OK. And then in the, in the chat, yeah, I just got welcome with Ashley in the room as well. So presumably they're in the, in the green room. Uh, Ashley's just there, in fact. Fantastic. Hello. Hi, uh, Ashley. Coming in to say hello, and thank you all for for being here today and facilitating this session. And um, you'll have an in-session moderator that won't obviously be on your screen with you, but will be supporting chat and funneling any questions uh, elevated. They'll also be removing any inappropriate comments, but that's a very minor, uh, a minor thing. Um, and then you'll have someone that is also monitoring the YouTube chat. So your session, session will be streamed uh, to YouTube, and you'll have someone else that's monitoring that and funneling the questions that might come in from YouTube into your main chat function here so that none of those get missed. But if you have any technical issues, those two people can, can support you through that. Um, you can communicate to them using the mod chat, the far right, the MOD uh, option there. And yes. That'll also, should something go like really technically wrong, the Juno team can come in and help um, if you post in that as well. So let's, ho let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, we hope not. That's right. Um, but again, thanks for being here. And it looks like y'all are all squared away, set to go. Yeah, we've got one more uh, presenter waiting to come in. I think Carol O'Donnell, who's okay. not in yet from Smithsonian with us. And so we're just hanging on for that. Great. And here's Carol. Look at that, on time. Fantastic. Everyone's in. Great. We're all set. Perfect. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, have a great session. We'll Thank be you very watching, much. Uh, well done, guys. The event's going great. Well done. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Hey, Carol, you okay? Oh, I think Carol was here for a second. I can see. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we can hear you. We can't see you yet, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. There we go. Oh, there you go, yeah. Okay, let me move this over here. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. And you and you said that you can hear me, and my voice isn't um, okay. All right, thanks. I think I think it sounds good. It sounds good on the side. Okay, Carol, I'm just getting a little bit of feedback on my audio. Um, just whether it's worth just testing mics on and off, that sort of thing, just to troubleshoot. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I. The, my problem is I have two mics, and this because this system is new, I'm not certain how to shut off the one mic. Let me let me try to unplug it. Hold on. There's a bit of rustle there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just getting double audio, I think, from Carol. Uh, there Although double audio is definitely better than no audio. True. It's always a nice backdrop here, though, isn't it? Magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> it's fabulous. I'm very jealous. Uh, it's, it works well. It works well. No need for any sort of green screens. Oh, grander than any green screen. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a depiction of scene from Revelation, which is actually quite scary close up. Crikey, yes. 
It's, um, oh, in fact, that, that's actually Goliath down there with his head being right. chopped up by David. Then okay. up there is meant to be Noah's Ark somewhere. Right. Then over there is Revelation. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So no, no idea how the communication will go with people in the room, but it's good to see people in the room and hope it'll go well. Yeah. And Can you hear me, Jeff? Yeah, I, def I can hear you, yes, yeah. For whatever reason, I've lost your audio. Are you on mute, Jeff? I don't think so. Tim, can you hear me okay? Tim, I can't hear either one of you. You're both muted. Um, hang on. That's strange. I, I, I've got Jeff loud and clear. Carol, yeah, I can't I can hear, hear either you. one of you. I'm going to exit out. I'm going to try again. You can hear me okay, Tim, yeah? Is that fine? I, I can, yeah. I, I As I logged on, I just kept everything very simple. I, I'm, I'm not using headphones or anything, just so I've just got the, the automatic system doing its thing. Is there is there a Twitter handle or similar for the youth mobilizer? There will be, yes. It's going to be, let's have a look. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Is it, uh, I think it's capital G Y, then mobilization with capital M with a Z though. Okay. Yeah, I think my leading to you, Tim, I was going to say, really, what, what I said yesterday, I've been given so much spiel to read at the beginning. I think most of my opening section will be about the health and safety spiel. <laughs> Fine, no problem at all. Uh, a few people joining the room now, which is good. Great stuff. Just need Carol. Hello, Tim. Hello, Jeff. My name is Amira with Juno. How are you today? We're good. How are you? Great. I am just checking in, making sure we're about 15 minutes out. I apologize. I was in another room working on um, some audio and stuff. How are you guys feeling? Do you need anything from the Juno team? I think we're good. Uh, we've got a colleague, Carol, just trying to jump back in with a few audio issues, but I think she should be back in in a second. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure that I guess we don't, do we go live when the clock hits zero? Is that right? 
Exactly. So you'll see that blue in the bottom right hand corner. When it goes live, it's going to count all the way down to zero and it will turn red with a little live button for you. Um, so you'll right. see that in that bottom right hand. Perfect. I think uh, apart from that, we're fairly all good. He's missing Carol. That's all. She came in twice now and tried to go back in again and the audio wasn't connecting so well. So, okay. Well, I'll be here and um, I'll help her troubleshoot that as well. Okay. Looks as though there's lots of people joining. We've, we've got Carol as well in the room, I think, Joe. Um, Looks like Carol's coming in. Terrific. <laughs> Looks good. Hi, Carol. I'm Amira with Juno. I'm sorry you were having some issues. Hi, Amira. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, Sounds okay. great. Looks great. And is it also possible to test the sharing of slides? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and test that out. Um, and the bottom middle button is the share desktop button. Uh, if you click that, it'll allow you to choose what you'd like to share. This, this is the button that looks like the share desktop. Okay. Yeah. A little pop-up. It looks like a little desktop. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Can you see that? Like, am I able to see the slides? They can, like, what's, can you see slides that say Smithsonian Science Education Center? Yes. You, on your screen, it will show as a black, but a black screen that says publishing desktop, but we, I can see those slides just fine. And when I move it, you can see it move? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thank great. you. Yeah, of course. Is there anything else that we're going to be sharing today that we want to test out before we get started? Just some love and some thoughts. some thoughts, you know. <laughs> thoughts, and prayers, all the love. <laughs> Quite yeah. right, and, exactly. Carol, can you hear me okay now, by the way? Can yes. you hear me now, Carol? Great. And, and did I get rid of the echo, Tim? Yes. Okay. But that sounds yeah, that, good, Carol, actually. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. Uh, Amira, so the people in the room that are waiting now, can they hear us now or not? Or is it just preview now? Nope. Uh, it, it's just going to be us until the 10 minutes goes down. This is just, oh, uh, this is what we call the green room, just so you can prep and get ready to go. Um, and then, like I said, once that counts down and gets to zero, uh, I'll give you a little message in that MOD chat on the far right. That is a chat just between us. And I'll just say we're live um, just as a reminder. So you guys can um, speak accordingly and introduce yourselves and get ready to present. Perfect. That's great. 
Wonderful. And I know Sophie's here as well. If you guys need anything, I'm going to pop up of camera. Um, and then if you need anything at all, I'll be in that mod chat. Like I mentioned, um, please let me know if you have any questions. That's great, Amir. Thanks for that. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. So I'm so sorry that um, I missed, I, I could hear some speaking at the very beginning. I know there was another person who was on, I could see her, but I just couldn't communicate with all of you and the sound was going in and out. So I missed some of what she said. Um, is there anything in particular um, in terms of the chat, moderating the chat or the Q&A? I think basically we've got a team moderating the YouTube uh, stream Q&A. Um, they're going to post it into the main Q&A if there's anything relevant. Um, whether that comes just through to me or through to all, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll relay questions back in as it comes in. That's fine from my side. Uh, they're monitoring everything. They'll kick people out if they're not very nice, and uh, that's a good one. And I think I think we're, we're pretty we're fairly okay, actually. It should be quite a casual thing. There's quite a lot of attendees coming in, which is quite nice to see. So you can see them on your end, Jeff? I can see them joining in uh, bit by bit. How many um, do you see? Just curious. I've got no idea. I, I can't count them all now. I've seen about 10, 11, 12 join so far. We're not live yet, so there's a lot of people waiting, which is good. Uh, the other sessions are still running. Um, and we'll find out, I think. So I'd expect there to be a good number in there, actually, and a good response. Excellent. Yeah, I've got a new message. What does that mean? Let's have a look. The downloads to be shared, question mark. I'm not sure who that is. Um, one bit of good news was that they're not going to hear us until we go live, which I wasn't too sure about. <laughs> I'm just going to try and... Did that mute you then, by the way? Is that right? It, it did. It did Great. mute you. And can I do the same, Jeff? Okay, so I was muted for, for a yeah. second. At the, uh, at, the, at the bottom of under the screen, uh, uh, there are some downloads. Are these to be uh, shared with the people on YouTube as well? Uh, Carol, they're mainly your uh, the resources for Smithsonian. Is that happy to share on YouTube for them as well? Yes, absolutely. And I'm happy to give these slides to them as well, if that would be helpful. I just, um, I'm going to be sharing slides, Sophie. So uh, in the flow of the session, you'll be sharing the link. If, if yes, I will copy and paste and uh, send it to YouTube. If not, I can do it, uh, get ready and do it on, t on time as the session goes. That's great. Yeah, as, as, as the sessions go, it should be absolutely fine. That's brilliant. Thank you. Great. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, we experienced this with previous sessions. When you share your screen, there is a little uh, square in the right uh, corner down. So uh, please enlarge the screen that you're sharing so that the YouTube attendees can also see it clear. Um, and uh, if there are any questions, I will try to follow the flow of the session and uh, post it to you uh, at the right moment. Okay, so the, you are not distracted by questions. Uh, and if there's something significant at the chat, uh, but while you present, I will disappear from the screen. Here. Thank you. That's <laughs> Thank wonderful. You. So if you need it in the Mord channel, is uh, only for us. It's a private uh, co communication channel. The attendees cannot see it. Okay. Thank you. Brilliant. So good luck. I disappear. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Okay. So I think what she said was that when each of us individually. So do you have slides, Jeff? No slides for me, no, I'm going straight forward. And, and okay, so I will have slides, if yep. that's okay. Um, and so I think she said that when I go to present or when you go to present, 
we just expand our screen using yeah, the bottom I think right. We expand the slide screen, isn't it? I think the box of the slide appears on the expand, I think. That's the one. Okay. So when I do you mind if I try that then? Yeah, you could go for it. Go for it. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to expand it. And so now you you see just my slides? We see you and the slides, but it's much bigger now. Oh, you can see both of us. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think we're good. Oh, we've got three minutes to go. We're doing, we're doing well. It's fine. <laughs> I'll say to Tim before that I've got quite a bit to read out at the start. Uh, that it's general information from the actual session. Uh, which we'll touch through, and uh, then I'll sort of, as you said last night, I'll, I'll introduce Tim. Tim, I might, I might say hello, a quick, quick chat to you before you kick off, um, just a bit to link it in nicely, and then once you've finished, we might, I'm hoping we'll have some questions in between the two of you that's come up so far, and to feed those in. I've got, um, I've also got Gareth on my WhatsApp as well, moderating too, so I can get any messages coming through, and hopefully it should go well. Then I hand over to you, Carol. Then if we have five minutes at the end after your session, I'll just wrap up and close. It's going to fly how, by. How much time um, this is from 12.15 until? Till, it's a 45-minute slot. Till 1. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. So, yeah, um, you're fine. You're fine. I'm, good. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good on Washington time. It's fine. So, yes, until <laughs> to, to, to 1 o'clock. But so we, I, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm guessing, Carol, that you're going to be reaching your session at approximately, let's have a look. I'm sort of estimating this here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, if we're on to you by 12.45 at the latest, you know, and then we'll be able to give you a good 10 minute slot, then, then time for any Q&A and wrap up. If we get on to you earlier, we get some more time for questions at the end, that'd be great. Just depends how it goes on there. But my, my kind of marker for me is to be on to you before 12.45. Um, okay. I, I, ideally slightly earlier than that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay. Okay. So that's the goal. So I'll, I'll try and push it around to that. So if, if and uh, so re really sort of 10 minutes each is kind of our hit point for it and leave time for questions in between. Well, okay. two minutes to go, folks. Jeff, do you want us to shut off our screens when you're on screen or because you'll expand your screen when you're talking, we don't have to worry about that? No idea. If I press expand, that happens, I think. Um, is that bigger for you now, is it? No. No. So I, I don't think it changes very much. So um, I think if we just sort of go on the rule of just staying, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go on mute when you guys are talking, but stay on screen probably. I, I'm, I'm not even, because I'm not so familiar with the software, I'm going to try and not press too many buttons as I go through. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> After what I experienced, I think that's a good point. All right, I'll go on mute now. Uh, if you feel that the video is uh, weak at some point, you can turn off the camera, or if there is echo in the sound. Uh, other than that, it's okay. Unless you want to eat more chocolates, uh, Tim, <laughs> then you have to turn off the camera. Uh, can I remind you to read the code of conduct before we start? No problem at all already. Well, enjoy the session. Thank you very much for the chance to participate okay good luck folks i know we, we never can tell with these things we just keep going uh -huh, quite it's some sort of countdown carol isn't it yeah here we go Well, hello to you all and welcome to this wonderfully exciting session on connecting schools and young people around the world. And of course, the Global Youth Summit at large. 
And now some of you are joining us through this great Juno platform, and many more are joining us through the live broadcast and multiple social media channels that are going out from here on this exceptional event today at the Global Summit. And it's a warm welcome to all of you from across the world for signing in. So please do interact and uh, click on those buttons, those likes, and share the work that we're doing here today. Uh, and before we kick off, a small bit of housekeeping for you all as well. First of all, please note that this session is part of the Global Youth Summit. Summit. And we strongly encourage you to explore other sessions and any one of the three tracks each day of the summit to really enjoy yourself uh, and uh, engage in all the great sessions that are going on as part of this, this whole uh, summit. Secondly, of course, by joining this session, everyone will have the opportunity to speak, uh, must consent to their image and audio being broadcast. Also, by participating in GYS, you have agreed to behave, of course, professionally, uh, respectfully, uh, and to be culturally sensitive towards other people, to promote the principles um, of respect, of diversity, uh, and inclusion, as well as actively prevent and not engage in abusive behavior of any kind that leads to any sort of harm, prejudice, discrimination, or harassment against any person. If you don't adhere to these principles, and I'm sure you will, um, our summit's code of conduct, you'll be removed from this session, and unfortunately, are potentially banned from the entire event, and nobody wants that at all. Uh, and the organization that nominated you will be notified of your actions. Um, on a very important note, we do have a safeguarding team uh, moderating our interaction today on the Juno platform uh, and the live broadcast chat function and all social media channels. And uh, to share with you all a, a very, very important point, should any of you feel um, at any point at all unsafe or witness any concerning behavior, uh, please, please, please do reach out by sending an email to safe at globalyouthmobilization.org. You may also get in touch with our support team at the virtual help desk. Um, all information uh, emailed to the email address will be kept private and confidential. And um, so, well, I can see everyone uh, dialing in right now. I can see people on the chat side of it. And greetings from Malaysia, I've just seen there. Uh, Miranda, welcome to you all from Ghana as well. We are definitely going global today and to a, a fantastic session. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this session uh, where we're exploring how we connect schools. And if you are coming in from a different language, don't forget to use the translation platform that is absolutely wonderful. Um, I've been using it in multiple sessions, so click on that side of it. And in the bottom corner of your screen, you've got an accessibility tab that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, my name is Jeff Shaw. I'm a headmaster of Scaresbrick Hall School, which is the home of the Global Classroom. And I'm speaking to you live from the historic and rather wonderful Oak Room at Scaresbrick Hall in England and the UK. You can see around me the oak carvings. Now, the Global Classroom is an educational phenomenon and the largest classroom in the world. It enables millions of children from around the globe to speak and hear from leading figures, from celebrities, and from change makers. And we work closely with the World Health Organization, UNICEF, National Geographic, Smithsonian, BMG, and Penguin Random House to reach out to an average of 4.5 million children uh, per event. And if you're interested in finding out more uh, about the Global Classroom or the free resources that are available, uh, please go and visit theglobalclassroom.com. That's www.theglobalclassroom.com for more information. And, and I've got two wonderful guests coming up later on today for this session, and I'll partner to talk to you. I've got Tim and Carol, and I'll introduce them later on. So hang in there, but you can see their smiling faces coming on. And this thank you, first of all, to all the chat bar going on. And you'll see on your screen uh, all the welcomes coming in, and they're brilliant, and the smiling faces and the thumbs up, and the hearts are coming in as well. We love the hearts. It makes us feel the love from all around the world. Uh, and you're just showing off right now. Thank you, folks. That is absolutely wonderful. So we are really passionate um, about the topics here. And I want you all to just listen very carefully because this is about all of the youth that are listening and making a difference. Uh, and we're going to take some really interesting steps forward, uh, but it's all about you and what's going on. But we know uh, that you're extremely powerful. Uh, at its core, the global classroom was an idea born out of disruption. So an idea born out of disruption. The pandemic gave us a sense, in some ways, of real worry, real distress, but actually commonality and understanding of something similar around the world. 
it, it gave us a, a unified topic that we could all relate to. And if you were in Nepal, if you were in uh, Cambodia, if you were in the UK, if you were in America, if you were in Ghana over here as well, then you will be able to talk about how COVID-19, how the pandemic has affected you. It's also accelerated the use of technology like this wonderful event uh, to share and, and to share ideas across the world and to connect countries, smashing down barriers of inequality and deprivation. It's also in that moment highlighted the clear tech divide and has pushed us into innovative low tech solutions that have facilitated a quantum leap in educational thinking. And it's really exciting to talk about this. Now, so it's true that all of you tuning in right now on YouTube, on the platforms, on social media, and here in Juno, uh, yes, you are a generation disrupted, but disruption is part of the innovation process. There's no doubt the pandemic has been a storm and it's swept across a tsunami of disruption and chaos coming around. But I want you all to just imagine when a storm is blowing, it causes chaos across the world and it does all sorts of horrible things, but actually it can clear new paths and new ways. So as the disruption comes, as we all feel unsettled, we can actually change things and come back better and stronger because of it. And that's a really important message. For too many years, we've been trimming branches, reshaping corners, but this disruption has allowed us to remake and redesign the landscape with wellness and well-being at the core. Now, no one expected the Global Classroom Initiative to become such a phenomenal success, uh, but it started with an idea, a vision and a belief that we can achieve extraordinary things if we allow ourselves to dream big. And I call upon each and every one of you today to do just that thing and to dream big and we can make this happen. We learned that by connecting learners across the world, they realize that they are one global community, interconnected. They gain compassion and understanding. And we also empower them to be to change by giving them access to high quality experts, credible research based information and shattering that divide between perhaps world leaders and the youth today. And that's something that this event is doing. It's amazing. So in short, we make sure that your voice is being heard by the most important people in the world. And in the global classroom, we don't focus on traditional curriculum subjects like maths and English, but perhaps instead we focus on the rights of the child and the physical and mental well-being of children and the youth all around the world. Now, we think that that sense of well-being is actually a commonality and a unifying factor. So when you look around the world, we know that looking at who you are, your rights to health, your rights to clean water, your understanding of well-being and mental well-being and mental health it should be the same all around the world. And we're passionate about that. And we've had examples of doing specialist days all about breathing, about the environment, about our mind, about connecting generations. And these are all powerful tools to enable and facilitate the youth around the world to make a difference. And we know it's wonderful to be here today connecting globally through technology. Um, however, we all know there is a significant tech divide uh, within countries all across the world. And that divide isn't just perhaps across different countries, but can actually be um, amongst uh, small areas, state areas within countries where you have poverty down the street. And I think my first guest here today, our next person to speak to you is a wonderful person. And I want to welcome uh, Tim Howarth, who is CEO of United World Schools. Now, uh, United World Schools is a charity whose mission is to improve through education life opportunities for some of the world's poorest children living in remote and marginalized communities. Now, that's going to be interesting, Tim, to look at because I'd imagine most of the schools that you work with don't have access to broadband all the time. Is that right? Hi, Tim. How are you anyway? Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. And, and, and Jeff, thanks very much for that very kind introduction. Yeah, really well, thank you. And so, perhaps, can you go into a bit about what you do uh, and a bit about United World Schools and how we can understand how to connect globally? And I know you work with some of the some areas that are in the, in, in the news right now, like Myanmar, isn't it, uh, that are having some real difficulties at the moment as well. So perhaps take us on that journey from yourself, explain about what you do and how you go about it. Uh, of course, and, and some really powerful themes there, Jeff, you just mentioned, you know, of reflecting on the 
the, the connectivity and the connections we, we've made it due to the disruption of the last 12 months. And actually, I'd like you to imagine a ethnic minority student who's nine, 10 years old. Uh, they don't even speak the national language, let alone understand languages around the world. They have no access to internet. And yet, we've had students from some of the poorest communities in the world directly connecting through the global classroom with some world leaders and celebrities, asking questions directly of people who we are all aware of around the world. It's been phenomenal to have a real connectivity through this disruption in COVID-19. And I'll just bring that uh, to life a little bit. And, and also just to reference that, isn't it fantastic today to, and, and yesterday and tomorrow to be part of something that looks forward positively. You know, it's been such a tough last 12, 13, 14 months for so many people around the world, particularly young people. And yet, isn't it great to be part of something that looks forward positively and crucially empowers young people on their life pathway? And that's again, a, a core theme about what connections can achieve, what partnerships can achieve, and what a global community can achieve, which is that empowerment of young people. So, so let's let's think about that ethnic minority nine-year-old that they they go to one of our community schools in Myanmar or Cambodia or Nepal. And if you want to find out a little bit more, UnitedWorldSchools.org is our organisation. I'm I'm the chief executive Tim Howarth, but they are students who are living at or below the poverty line, and they are connected with students living in more affluent contexts around the world, including actually the school that, that Jeff is the headmaster of, Scarisbrick. And, and the students at Scarisbrick have been directly connecting with their partner, it, it, enabling them to go to school, again, to empower these uh, young people on their educational journey. So, so we are able to work with communities in very remote contexts who have no access to things like running water or electricity or the internet very very poor there may well be language barriers or cultural barriers and yet we're able to connect through our partnership model and through our partner schools children around the world and young people around the world to empower them on a very different and much better life pathway as well as enabling young people in more affluent contexts to be able to support other young people who are not as fortunate as themselves. A real important part of empowerment and connectivity, of course, is to be able to stand behind causes that matter. And I can't think of a better cause than education and young people to get behind. So we've had a very, very difficult last 12 months as an organization. Our communities have had a very difficult time. And yet we've been able to do things differently. As Jeff says, disruption can be a great enabler. And that's what we've been able to do. For example, knowledge is power. We all know that. That's partly why we all invest so much in education. Of course, if you're an ethnic minority student living in a very, very remote community, maybe halfway up a Himalayan mountain, in the jungle of Cambodia, in the rolling forests of Myanmar, you may not have access to really reliable information. You almost certainly won't have access to information in your language, in your ethnic minority language. And that was one of the first things that we had to do as an organization, which was to make sure that young people had access to accurate information about COVID-19. We also needed to make sure that their education could continue. So we ran remote learning with forest schools, with take home lessons. We even had to use uh, ways that would enable people to understand how to stay safe during COVID-19 that made sense because social distancing is quite a difficult concept to translate, but the length of a cow makes a lot of sense. So we had to be quite innovative and we had to understand that because of this disruption, we had to do things differently, but we've empowered young people through that process. And it's been wonderful to see because throughout the last 12 months, our partner schools of which Scarish Brick Hall is one, and we've got over a hundred around the world, including many of the countries that I've just seen referenced here uh, with, with people saying hello today. We've got partner schools around the world and the students from those partner schools are empowered to be active global citizens connected directly to some of the poorest children and young people in the planet and help them on their educational journey. How do they do it? Very simple. They learn about the 
mission of education in very remote communities. And that's what we do as an organization. But it's more than just that. They then become ambassadors for that cause. They share that message. They talk passionately about why it's important that all young people get to learn to read, write and count. All young people can have a great education. All young people can then connect, learn, develop and be empowered on their future and also act. And that's one of the great things I think about today. That this is this is an opportunity for people to deeply understand how we can all be activists and active in terms of moving things forward positively after an incredibly tough last 12 or more months. So our partner schools around the world are raising money for their community schools in very poor countries, Cambodia, Myanmar, Nepal. They're also learning about it. They're connecting through things like shared drawings, shared letters, videos, images. They're, they're doing fundraising activities that bring that sense of community together. And that's all part of being an activist. It's all part of being an ambassador. And it's all part of being connected as a global community because that sense of empowerment, of course, is universal. And although we've all had a very, very tough last 12 months, it's great to be looking forward positively. It's great to be empowering young people and connecting young people around the world. And that's what the Global Classroom does. That's what United World Schools do. And actually, I think we're about to hear from another organization that's doing some fantastic work. And, and, and we'll, we'll build on that in a moment as well. Uh, but I'd just like to, to, to leave you with, with, with another thought, which was uh, we, we, were, we were really, really impressed by another one of our partner schools who, who said, look, during lockdown, we can't walk anywhere really. Um, but therefore, we're going to go on a long walk. That made no sense. What, what does that mean? Well, they said, well, collectively, as a community, we're going to walk locally and you'll add up all those kilometers, you'll add up all those miles. It's going to be the distance from our school to our partner school. Their partner school was in Nepal and they were a school in Germany and they walked 5,000 kilometers collectively to get to their partner school. It was amazing. We talk about connections. That's a way that we can keep other people in our mind as we're in lockdown, as we're dealing with COVID-19. We can walk around the world. I thought it was a great way of staying connected because that's it, a way we can empower young people. And when learners and young people are empowered and active, we know there's no limit to what they can achieve. Jeff, thank you very much for the chance to, to share a few thoughts today. And I, I hope that, that uh, that's brought it alive a little bit and delighted to, uh, to take any questions, of course, as they come up as well. But thank you very much. Now, Tim, that's super. That's brilliant. Okay, lots of love coming out for that walking program around the world. People like that one a lot. Okay, there are some questions coming in right now, Tim, as well, and a couple of ones. Quite a few are saying. Uh, first is the easy one for you. How do I get involved with being a partner school if I'm a school that's in an area where I could give, I can do something, I can support people around the world? What can they do, Tim? Brilliant. So, so, so the best thing to do is just jump on our website. So UnitedWorldSchools.org. There's a link there that says Partner Your School. Have a read about it. If that sounds like a great fit for you, we would welcome you with open arms and our team will, will get back to you if you just fill in the, the online inquiry form. Is there any criteria to become a partner school, Tim, at all or not? Or can anyone be a partner school? So, so any school around the world can be a partner school of United World Schools. We, we do ask that people commit to a fundraising uh, co commitment to raise money for very, very poor schools in very, very poor contexts. But the amount raised is not set at all. It might be it, it might be 100 US dollars. It might be 1,000 US dollars. It might be 10,000 US dollars. But it's whatever a, a particular community can raise to help other young people around the world. And with, with that program, I know there's been a, some interesting challenges in different ways. Uh, one is about the funding side of challenges, Tim, but also perhaps about getting actual teachers back from the pandemic after this chaos. What have been some of the biggest challenges in a nutshell for the program at the moment? Yeah, I, I, and, and I think schools around the world have, have, have ch been challenged to, to, to reinvigorate and build back better with our teachers. And, and one of the learnings that, that we had is uh, it's amazing when you, when you empower young people and you empower teachers what they can achieve. We, we, we couldn't do the normal traveling around the countries we work in internationally for obvious reasons in the last 12 months. But we were able to rely on the people in our communities, our community teachers, to deliver some completely innovative work and absolutely brilliantly because they were empowered as young people to, to take a challenge and, and to run with it. And that's one of the reasons why I think this, this, this Global Youth Summit today is so important because that's all about empowering young people and empowering teachers to drive youth 
uh, empowerment in many, many ways around the world. It's brilliant. A couple of questions here. One is about uh, understanding the difference between actually being a partner here and in the global classroom. It's a great question coming in. One is, of course, the global classroom is free to anybody to access and we broadcast via radio stations as well as by the website as well. Um, however, Tim's talking about if you want to take action and you want to connect with schools in uh, in areas of great deprivation around the world and you want to try and support them, uh, there is a partnership program run by United World Schools where you can actually get involved in connecting and being the change in supporting those schools. Tim, I, I, one question here was about marginalized uh, schools in Latin America. Uh, and do you know of anyone doing any work out there? I think it's a really interesting topic right now. There's a lot of difficulties in Latin America. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, unfortunately, it is a, is a common challenge in some of the poorest countries in the world, which is to have large populations of out-of-school children. And we know there are several countries in Latin America that unfortunately have far, far too many children out of school. Now, with more resource, that's absolutely something that we as an organization want to do. We, we're not working there right now, but we do think we've got a model we could take to, to countries in Latin America, uh, but that's all part of our 10-year of our journey, looking ahead to the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. We also know there are some fantastic organizations currently working in Latin America. We're part of, for example, the Global Schools Forum. I speak to colleagues from Latin America quite regularly. I was speaking to a colleague last week uh, who actually runs schools for very, very poor communities in Latin America. So there are an awful lot of of, of organizations, not-for-profit organizations, and, and very low-cost private school operators who are helping some of the poorest children in the world go to school. Uh, so, so although it's, it's within our ambition as an organization, it's also a collective spirit and, 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 and the, the unifying and very simple need is we want all children to, to be able to go to school, to be able to learn to read, write, and count. Brilliant, okay, and, and it's some great challenges there as well, certainly. Um, so I think we're going to post in the, the comments again on the chat side of it, the website for UWS, if you're interested in that side of it. Uh, the Global Class Classroom website is also being posted in there as well. So how could you get involved from this so far? Well, you might say to yourself, I'm really interested in the Global Classroom. I'll come on to that at the end. Anyone can come part of that. Go onto the website, theglobalclassroom.com, and you can go onto there and see the resources that are absolutely for free. There's no need to join. There's no subscription free fee. You just jump straight in there. You can download straight away. If you want to get involved in perhaps being part of a Global Classroom event, um, on that website, there is a getting contact email. And you could say, hey, I'm coming in from uh, Ghana. I'd love to be part of the next event. And our next event coming up for the Global Classroom, for the giant classroom event, is actually coming up uh, in June the 8th. And we're focusing on the environment there. And that's a great issue. It's had so many features in the summit so far. And we'll have some fantastic guests coming up where you can talk live to them uh, and talk about that as well and some brilliant work going on. I'm just going to scan through the chat now, Tim, before I move on from you in a second uh, as well. Um, I think we're going to address that on that side of it in terms of where you apply for it. People are keen to support, looking forward to starting uh, in a second, which is great. Um, now, Tim, if, if there's somebody in there who's saying, you know, um, I want to get involved in a different kind of way, perhaps I want to be on the ground uh, rather than actually just raising money, what would you advise them to do, perhaps? Yeah, and, and the the most important thing is is we all use our time to have the biggest possible human impact in a positive way now that that will depend on where of course you are in the world uh but but there's, there's always something one can do locally there's some there's almost always something one can do nationally and there's always something one can do internationally so 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 I, I'd, I'd encourage people around the world to say well what can i do to act locally what can i do to act globally uh, i'll find a cause that i'm passionate about and do a few things well you know, Find find organisations that, that you you connect with, uh, and and uh, remember that you can make a, a big impact both locally and globally by by uh, by focusing on doing a few things well and, and, and causes and organisations that you that you deeply resonate with. Brilliant, Tim. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're going to move on in a second. So the Global Classroom works with a number of partners around the world, and there's some brilliant partners in there. And one of our core partners we work with is the Smithsonian Science Education Centre, and I've actually got. Coming in next to our next guest is Dr. Carol O'Donnell, who is the director of the Smithsonian Science Education Center, and they do some tremendous work. So they not only feature in our global classroom regularly, and they come on and they do an amazing job uh, of providing information uh, that is credible, that is fact-checked, uh, that you can rely on, uh, that's been researched and determined. So we know that one of our greatest battles is misinformation around the world as well. And we rely on experts to come in and to provide information and guidance on that too. And they've been on the journey of the global classroom right from the very beginning when we started this. 
uh, and Carol's been involved in that and working with us. Uh, so Carol, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Jeff. How are you? Really good. Great to have you here. Uh, you do an amazing job. Uh, would you mind sort of explaining kind of what you do and the kind of things you bring to the Global Classroom and then the kind of resources that you work on at the Smithsonian as well? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it's interesting because if we think about the three of us together, the Global Classroom is this broad umbrella initiative that brings together uh, youth as well as people who are supporting young people around the globe into one cohesive classroom event. And as you said, it was born out of, a, out of the pandemic, but will continue to connect people globally. And we're just three of the examples of organizations that come together. Um, so if you think about this broadly, the Global Classroom is this big umbrella event that brings together these wonderful individuals um, periodically. And the work that Tim just talked about, schools on the ground that are making a difference in marginalized communities. And I'm going to bring everyone down to a very, very narrow niche, which is, all right, so what resources are actually available to us for free, to each one of you for free, that can help you do what Tim talked about, which is to act locally in order to help solve problems that might be global problems. And you know, sometimes you might wanna know, what, what actually can I do with the people in my community to help them to better understand COVID-19, to help them better understand why being vaccinated is important, or to help them better understand maybe there's issues around biodiversity loss in your community. And that's what the Smithsonian does. So I was going to share some resources with everyone. Can I go ahead and do that now, Jeff? Or I think I mean, the, the journey you've gone of an extraordinary, isn't it? Because we also bring in uh, people at the National Geographic, BMG as well, to share that. But Carol, you've been on the journey along so far, so please carry on. That's fantastic. Excellent. All right, I'm going to share my slides. Let's make certain that everyone can see them. And, and then I'll go ahead. Um, once you can see it, and I'll expand it so that everyone can see the screen. Can you see a bigger vision of the, of the screen, Jeff? Does that work? All right, thanks, everyone. So I'm from the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian Science Education Center is a part of the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, thumbs up if you've ever heard of the Smithsonian. Uh, we are an organization that does a lot of work around the globe. And I love, just like Jeff, I love seeing all those thumbs. So we increase and diffuse knowledge. And our institution um, also has an organization called the Smithsonian Science Education Center. And we work with youth all across the globe. Now, if you're interested in helping others develop global competencies around, for example, the sustainable development goals that Tim talked about, we can help you do that by helping you to create learning experiences that are locally relevant, but globally important. So it's complicated. You take these big complex issues like climate change, biodiversity loss, COVID-19 or other pandemics, and you try to bring them down to these local investigations to help people make local decisions and to engage in local action taking, as Tim talked about. And of course, if you can do that on a micro level, you're going to make a difference on a global level. So the Smithsonian produces free resources from its project called the Smithsonian Science for Global Goals Project, which is based on the UN Sustain Sustainable Development Goals. And what we're trying to do is not help individuals and communities know what the Sustainable Development Goals, we help them actually embrace the Sustainable Development Goals to make a difference in their communities. Some of the guides, which we call community research guides, in other words, you're engaging in research in your community and helping your community make a difference. These community research guides help you carry out local actions, local investigations on global problems. Each one of them is made up of anywhere from seven tasks or activities that you can do with youth in your community to 42, where you can pick and choose. You will examine the problem from multiple perspectives, and this is really important. We cannot just look at these issues from an environmental perspective. We have to understand them from a social perspective, a cultural perspective, um, a, an ethical perspective, and an economic one, because people have to make decisions based on all of these different issues. And ultimately, with these tools that I'm sharing with you, you'll be able to take local action to address the issue in your community. And as you can see here, we have resources that focus on mosquito-borne diseases. Maybe you're in a region where malaria um, or um, dengue 
or even Zika are a problem. Uh, we have modules on food and food security, better understanding where does your food come from and how do you ensure food access. Biodiversity, biodiversity loss, but, um, sustainable cities and sustainable communities. How do you make certain that you're using resources today in a sustainable way so that they'll be available to our uh, future generations? And then finally, we have modules on COVID-19, how can I protect myself and others, and vaccines. And I'm going to share specifically resources with you from those last two modules so that you can make a difference now by going out into, into your community to help share knowledge with your, uh, the people in your community so you can make a difference. So we use a framework which we call discover, understand, and act. And basically what we're gonna help you do with our lessons is help you, help you in your community discover the issue from your local perspective because everyone is different. Um, you're really focusing on social outcomes. Then we'll help you understand the science that underlies the issue. And then finally, we'll give you the tools to act, to use that new so scientific knowledge to make a difference in your community. Some of the topics I mentioned, COVID-19, how can I protect myself and others? This photo, these photographs that you see, these are students from all over the world, uh, whether it's in Mexico and other regions in Latin America, or it's in South, um, South Korea. But these students are using their new knowledge to educate others. We've also been engaged in modules focused on food, and this is in Malawi, where students uh, um, have their own gardens, where they grow uh, their own vegetation on the school grounds. Biodiversity, where students are studying in Panama, uh, the biodiversity within their community, within their environment. And again, mosquito, mosquito-borne diseases, where students are actually discovering what does it mean um, when we have standing water in our community? How do we reduce that standing water? How do we ensure that mosquitoes are not infecting others with disease in their community? And the images that you see are at the top. Students are actually designing, engineering their own mosquito trap, and then they're placing those mosquito traps around their school and community grounds. And you can do this with the people in your community. Um, Another thing I want you to think about is when you're trying to get people to act, you have to recognize that there are different kinds of actions. For example, a simple action is an executed action, where I say to you, I want you to take any plastic that you see in your community and I want you to put it into this blue bin so that we can recycle it. That's an executed action. You're telling somebody to do something. And that's great, but it's probably not very long lasting. If they don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, they may stop the action once you, once you stop telling them to do it. Another type of action is an informed action. An informed action is one where now you explain to them, plastics do not biodegrade as easily as other materials, and therefore if you put it into the environment, it may last for a very long time. And now they have new information that allows them to do a better job of now recycling. Another type of action is a connected action. And that's an action where you say, all right, if you recycle in your home or in your, on your school grounds, that will actually make a difference in your local community. If we recycle in our local community, it'll make a difference for worldwide pollutants, plastic pollutants in the oceans. So you're helping people connect local actions to global ones. And then finally, the most difficult actions are considered actions. And that's where you say to somebody, I know that it's important for you to recycle, but you have to recognize that there might be environmental reasons or economic reasons or social reasons why people choose not to recycle. And so these are all important perspectives that have to be taken into consideration as you make more considered actions. We cannot do this work, of course, on our own. So what we do is we partner with global entities around the globe and I want you to know that you can do the same. So for example, there's a group called the Inter-Academy Partnership. The Inter-Academy Partnership are scientists all over the globe in 143 different regions who want to give back to their communities. They want to share their scientific knowledge to help others make a difference. And so for example, we're working with the Benin Young Academy of Scientists and Engineers in Benin in Africa 
And together, these young scientists are working with youth in their community who are very young from ages five to 17 to help educate them on COVID-19. Now, what does it mean to educate somebody on COVID-19 or to educate somebody on vaccine, um, so the science of vaccines? So I wanna share with you a little bit of the examples of activities that you can do in your community, whether in Latin America, in Asia, in Africa, in the US. So how can I protect myself and others is one of our modules that you can get free um, online at the link that I'm gonna share with you in the chat. All of these materials are free. So what's happening in the world right now? So students always have to start with asking the question from their local community because COVID-19 will look different based on where you're living. We want students to think about who they are as an individual. They create their own identity maps. They think about who they are within their community and that helps them to better understand the topic. But we definitely are concerned about people's emotional safety and their physical safety. So if you were to implement this in your community, we would give you those kinds of tips along the way so that you can make a difference in supporting people emotionally and physically. And you heard Jeff when he talked about the global classroom, it's about your mind, it's also about your body. Now this is an example of an identity map. And you would be surprised if you created your own identity map, all the things that you think about when you think about yourself as an individual. So this is Carla's identity map. And she says she's female. Um, she believes she's a minority. She considers herself to be Latina. Uh, she's a sister and she's a wife. And Carla thinks about herself in all of these different ways when she is engaging um, in educating others within her community. So sometimes we also have people think about issues from different perspectives and we get them to think about how they make decisions. So let's think about this simple question. Schools should not shut down during a pandemic. Can you do me a favor and put in the chat, do you strongly agree with that or do you strongly disagree with that statement? And why do you agree or disagree? Or maybe you're somewhere in between. Schools should not shut down during a pandemic. So put in the chat, do you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or somewhere in between? And when you write that, also think about what's the reason or the evidence that you're using to support your decision. So somebody might say, no, schools should not shut down during a pandemic because there are economic or social reasons why we can't shut down schools. Students have to learn. We heard from Tim how important schools are. Somebody else might say, I'm just thinking of this from a scientific perspective. I do not want the spread of the disease. You have to shut down schools. And so we empower people, as Tim talked about, to think about these issues from different perspectives and to use evidence to inform their decisions. And I love some of the comments that are being made in the chat as to why we think schools should shut down. So we have something, I agree a school is not a building, it's a group of people who are working together and interacting with one another. So that is taking this from a social perspective. Now we give you the tools to engage students in teaching science with simple, simple materials. Maybe it's a mirror or a glass or a phone, water, a bowl of water, maybe a homemade mask to teach people why masks wearing is important. Maybe it's simple oil or ghee or butter to teach them about the fatty lipids that exist on the outside of viruses. Maybe it's just a simple piece of paper to teach people why it is that contact tracing during COVID-19 actually matters. What's the science behind that contact tracing map? And then finally, we also give students the ability to think through how can they take action? And so it's important for them to know that it's not just about learning the science, it's about doing something with that science to engage in social good within their region. So I'll leave you with this. In the next week or so, we're all going to celebrate um, World Immunization Week. 
and I hope you'll celebrate it with us. And the Smithsonian will be releasing during World Immunization Week a module that we call Vaccines, How Can We Use Science to Help Our Communities Make Decisions About Vaccines. We all know that people have concerns about vaccines. This module, which we'll release next in the next week or so, will help you figure out what are the concerns that people have about vaccines? What science can I learn about the vaccines to help my community address those concerns? And then finally, what can I do to communicate that science to others so that I empower them with this new knowledge so that they can make better decisions? And this is all about action taking, as Tim talked about. So I'm gonna end there. I want you to look out for this in the next week. I'm gonna put the chat, the link in the chat again. That's where you'll find the new vaccines module and all the other modules that we share with you for free. So um, please don't hesitate to email me. I'll put my email address in the box. If you have any questions, we want you to reach out to us. All right, take care. Well, wow, Carol, thank you very much. We've got some really good interactions going on there. Some exciting stuff happening. Lots of love coming through the program. So we've got about three or four minutes left. Uh, we've got thank you. There's some great stuff going on there. You said before how to access those resources, Carol. What's the best way again to get to them? Yeah, the link that I just put in the chat, sscc.si.edu slash global hyphen goals. That's the uh, best I'm, way to get those resources. I'm also sure, Carol, that you do a lot of work on trying to access that in different languages and also disabilities in some way. How does that work for you at Smithsonian? Yeah, so right now, for example, the COVID-19 module is available in 26 different languages. Um, the vaccines module, of course, is gonna be released uh, next week in English and then in Spanish. And we already have several countries who've already emailed us asking to translate it into other countries. If at any point any of you out there is interested in translating this content into your native language, do not hesitate to contact us. We'll provide the resources to you to do that. All we ask is that you share it widely with others. Brilliant. So let's try and just bring it all together for one second, okay? Uh, let's look at this. So we have an entity called the Global Classroom that brings together people like the Smithsonian, uh, impacts and engaging with schools that Tim spoke about over here. We have National Geographic involved, BMG involved, uh, a massive audience of children around the world engaging with that. What can you do now? Well, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure you get on board with it, be part of this movement as well, and take part in our session. So, number one, go to the website www.theglobalclassroom.com. That's part of our site here on the Global Summit event. You can see on there, be part of it, get access to all these free resources. You'll see videos on there of Carol and her colleagues from the Smithsonian going through these resources as well, talking to you about it in small snippets also. You can also click on there, info at theglobalclassroom.com from that website, and we can link you in with everything going on. We can feature you in an episode talking to a world leader. Uh, to an amazing person up there as well. We've had Bear Grylls on there. We've had Dr. Tedros on there as well. Huge people that you can engage with live and talk about. But most of all, we want to empower you, empower you very much in what you're doing. Now, there's one or two final questions before we finish. Carol, what's the age range for your resources? I think you're on mute, Carol, so I apologize. I'll take you off. Ages 8 to 17. Wonderful, amazing stuff on there, okay? And that's really accessible to work with, and that's fantastic, okay? So you can be involved with the Smithsonian work, the Global Classroom work, the National Geographic work, the Gen Geo side of it. I want to be part of this amazing movement that's really making great steps in here. And I, I would love you to be a part of it. If you email us, we want to make sure you get involved in it, and you are on there as well. I'm going to scan through. There's been so many comments so far that have taken place on there. Uh, also, there's a question on here, Carol, actually. Is it possible to work with you to create resources? Quick answer. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Now we've got one more minute to go. I'm gonna get one final word from Tim and from Carol. Tim, your final message. Are you ready for that? From your point of view, what would you say? Go, go ahead. Uh, the young people can be activists, and when they are, they are the most powerful force we've got in, in the entire world because they are crafting the future, and the future is where they will succeed. Brilliant, Carol. Go. I would. I would just say you can make a difference in adults' lives by communicating that science to them. We've got clear studies that show that that intergenerational conversations between young people and adults, you can teach adults a lot of information. So that's what we're hope, we hope you'll do. Final from me, 
Don't forget, disruption can be empowering. Disruption can give change. You can be the change. Make the difference. Get out there. Go and do it. We love you all. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, I love, I love all the love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Carol, Jeff, thank you very much. That was a really, really enjoyable session. Yeah, it flew by. It flew by. Lots of really interesting wow. chat coming through. Lots of engagement, actually. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, we've got some messages coming in. I'll just see what, what, if anybody's on there as well. Lots of thank yous. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, folks. Well done. If anyone comes up on that side of it. Bye. Thank you. It was amazing. Um, been really beneficial. Thanks for taking part. Um, no, I, I presume Carol and Tim and I, we're, we're not pressing those buttons all the time. I mean, they'll love it. They are coming in. It's a great and genuine. Thanks, guys. It's fantastic. <laughs> I think on the question side, if anybody is in here, I think we have picked up on most of the questions on here on the resources. Yeah, the, the, the only question I didn't answer was around the disability and access yeah, I, to disability. Yeah. So um, everything we have to do at the Smithsonian, and this is the benefit of being part of the government, um, is that it has to be accessible. So you, it has to be 508 uh, compliant. I forget, the. there's a, a, a number in the US that means that it's compliant, can be um, translated to be read by a reader if you are not able to see, um, that we have closed captioning on any of our videos, Etc. So we have to follow all the accessibility guidelines. And I think we did, I did a good job there trying to explain the umbrella side of Global Classroom people as well. I think it's uh, because there's so much going on. Um, and thanks to Carol for doing that as well. And Tim, you got a lot of interest in supporting schools overseas there as well. That was great to see. Absolutely. No, that's good. Got a, clearly a engaged audience. So thank you. Uh, I'll just see if anybody else put any questions or comments up there, first of all. Yeah, one new message to, did come in under the Q&A. Let's have a look. I oh, strongly about... agree. Yeah, yeah. That's a long one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Great views there on schools should be closed. There's no definitive view there, was there? About some saying open, some saying closed, different reasons. Yeah, and it's interesting to watch this actually happen with students where they position themselves individually along this continuum of agree to strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then they you put them together in a team, team or a group, and then they basically debate using evidence to kind of argue as to why they're making that particular claim. And then you pick one position from the team, and then you physically put them along this continuum on a in a room, so you can do it, or you can do it through Zoom, where you know Zoom has this cool feature where you can just place a, a dot along the continuum line, and it's it's easy to do both virtually and in person, but it's pretty empowering to get you to really think these things through from different perspectives, so, and you can do it with any topic, so. And the, the guest from Papua New Guinea there explaining you know, the, the value of education against the risk of the disease for young people. Very, very interesting debate that. Uh, and I think, you know, I think many educators would say that, um, that the, the weighing up the, de the damaging side of um, mental health for children not being in school is a de it's, it's, I, I think it's a fine balance. It's a really fine ba balance. And probably the higher risk potentially being teachers rather than pupils in there, I think. Uh, as well. So really interesting debate on that one. There's, there's no right or wrong, wrong answer in many ways. It's yeah, and I think I think most of the SDGs, uh, the topics that underlie the SDGs, those are, they're all, it's all about balance. Mm. And it's a great, it's a great statement to, for, to get people to think about that important balance, because if you just think about it from a scientific perspective, and being a scientist, I tend to do that, then you'll, you're not going to make the right decision. You have to think about it from this social, political, environmental, economic. Um, and you, and you know, when you see people debating, you see all those sides coming out. It's amazing stuff, isn't it? So Jeff, it's, it's, thank, you, thank you for inviting us. No, no, it, it is a fun session. Absolutely fun session. And thanks, Tim, as well. Thanks, Carol, brilliant to be here. And actually worked and out Jeff, really well in the end. Yeah, and Jeff, do let, you know, do let us know. I'm curious how many people um, were here in the yeah. end and yeah. be great if, um, I, 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 I don't have any, any numbers on my end. I just kind of have a sort of joint, so and so join. I think, I think all I can see is what you can see. I think. But the organisers right. might be able to give us. Um, Hannah might be able to give that. To I think us. so. What, what, what I would say there was nice engagement though. So thank you all to those taking part. If they're still here, and thanks, folks, and hope to see you all soon. And we'll plan on ahead with the eighth of June uh, environment thread, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. Take, take care, care, everybody. Thanks all. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.